Gospel of St. John, chapter number six, beginning with verse 53. And when you have it, let us reference the word by standing if you're physically able to do so. And we are preparing our hearts <clears throat> in our minds to enter into this season where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. St. John chapter number six, beginning with verse 53. Jesus said to them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments on this morning, I want to lay the foundation for this time of year. And I want to talk to you briefly from the subject of blood deficiency. A blood deficiency. Our blood bank is a place where healing blood is stored and supplied to help make someone who was lost and is suffering with a blood deficiency whole again. Jesus is a place where healing blood is. And he is there to save those who are lost and suffering and he makes us whole again. What we have to understand on today, Sister Millie, is that by birth, we all have a blood deficiency. And because we have a blood deficiency called sin, yes. we are still in need of God incarnate. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. He was in the beginning with God. Somebody should be shouting at that point. All things were made by him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Do you need Jesus on today? Amen. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. See, Jesus, he has been there since the beginning of time that we know. He knows all about our needs. He knows all about our troubles. He knows what we are going through and he is an all-sufficient savior. And he is the only one capable of fixing us when we are broken. 
He is the only one capable of leading us when we are lost. See, there are two major components that make the incarnation of Jesus Christ necessary. It is the sinfulness of mankind. And see, we all fall in that category. Why you say that, Pastor? Because the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Brother Leon, because we sin and because we fall short of God's glory, we are all doomed to death. I don't care how many services you go to, how many prayers you pray, you cannot save yourself. That means we are all in need of a savior that puts us all on the same playing field. But thank God on today, the second component is that we have a covenant making God. We have a covenant keeping God. We have a covenant revealing God. And we have a covenant enabling God. I'm going to say that again. So we all have a clear understanding that we are all sinful beings. But see, Dickie Woods, we can thank God on today that he's a covenant making God. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant revealing God. And he's a covenant enabling God. And a covenant, my brothers and my sisters, is basically an agreement between a, lesser, a higher being and a lesser being. I wonder which one we are. <laughs> but see, the purpose of the divine covenant is for them to be a vehicle of God's, of an expression of God's will and purpose to man. It's not a vehicle of bondage. But it's an expression of God's love. They are an effective way by which God reveals his purpose to mankind. See, when God created mankind, it was based on what we call the Edenic Covenant. The Edenic Covenant was made before sin entered the equation. This covenant, Sister Regina, involved the original man and the original woman. Adam and Eve. And let me throw this in parenthetically, not Adam and Steve. It reveals God's original purpose for mankind. We have to understand they were made in God's image and his likeness that meant spiritual, mental, and volitional. It involved the very character and nature of God. God also told them to be fruitful and to multiply. The fruitfulness involves natural reproduction and spiritual reproduction. I want you to keep this straight. We didn't, we weren't just put here to build up the nation with folk. We were here, we are here to bring the word to the folk. And we are called to build up the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of self, not the kingdom of church, but the kingdom of the true and living God. We ought to be fruitful and to multiply. But God also gave them a mandate to subdue the earth. The subduing the earth, it denotes warfare. And that it means to conquer and to subjugate. 
This implies that there's going to be a battle going on on earth. There is spiritual warfare between us and Satan. But not only are we supposed to subdue the earth, they were to eat of the herbs and the fruit. See, this involves sustenance for man, man's physical existence, because eating meat wasn't allowed into the Noahic covenant. We were to have dominion over the earth, rulership over God's creation, and we were to, to till the ground. This simply means that men and women were supposed to be working. working. Man was designed to work. See, in the terms of this covenant, we're based on the ability a man to walk by faith and obedience. My brothers and my sisters, we are to walk by faith and we are to walk in obedience. When we think of all that God has done for us, it should incline our hearts to worship. We should walk by faith and be obedient. If we don't feel like it, we are to walk by faith and to be obedient. If folks are calling us everything but a child of God, we are to walk by faith and be obedient. If we are not getting our way, we are still to walk by faith Amen. and to be obedient. obedient. Yeah. Understand the fact that God is a covenant making God. We're going somewhere with this. He's a covenant keeping God. And we can give God some praise on today because, see, we broke the covenant. Yeah, busted it up. But Freddie, he's a covenant keeping God. And because he's a covenant keeping God, he is obligated to his creation. See, with the fall of mankind, due to sin, God was still obligated to his own will to mankind especially when it comes to redemption this is foretold by the new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ see when the Edenic covenant had been violated and broken because of the fall, man came under the penalty of death. And it was sin that made the incarnation necessary. But understand, if God, Brother Terry, was to become man, it must be to become man apart from sin. Otherwise, he himself would be a sinner and unable to save other people. The solution is seen in the miracle of the virgin birth in which God clothed himself in flesh and was born of Mary the Virgin into the human race. Yes, sir. So you understand man sinned and therefore man must die. Only man can die for man. But no man born of Adam's race could ever qualify. Because all are born into sin. And we understand on today, let me make this clear, only God can redeem man. Amen. Amen. But God cannot redeem man as God, only as men. Therefore, God became a sinless man by the incarnation to redeem man back to himself yes. by the virgin birth. God brought forth a sinless being 
out of a sinful being. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And he was beheld, he, he beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and full of truth. See in this text, the atonement by the shedding of blood is absolutely necessary. And the doctrine of atonement is made up of the redemptive work of Christ, which involves his being born of a virgin, his crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension, his exaltation, his glorification. We have to understand on today that there is a need for Jesus in the midst of what we are going through. We understand that there is a need for Jesus. When we're dealing with grief, there is a need for Jesus. When we feel all alone, there is a need for Jesus. When we're trying to do the work of the church, there is a need for Jesus day in and day out, no matter what we endure. We must understand there is a need for Jesus. So if there is a need for Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, we must be connected and stay connected. So with that understood on this morning, how do we get connected? It's very simple. And I'm going to take my seat. Number one, we must trust the blood. Number two, we must be hungry for the blood. And we must partake of the blood. There must be trust in our Lord and our Savior. There must be a desire to seek him in the good times and in the good times. And we just can't stand and stand here and look at Jesus. We have to partake of the true and living God. We have to internalize God so he transforms us from the inside out. If we do these acts in faith, Brother Charles, we will be ready for the final day. I don't know about you, Sister Regina, but I want to hear well done thy good and faithful servant. Yes. I want to be ready for the final day. Yes. There's a place where there's no more trouble. Yes. I want to be ready yes. for the final day. Somebody told me there's no more sickness on the other side. I want to be ready yes. for the final day. There's no more persecution over there. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready for the final day. There are no more tears over there. No more weeping. I want to be ready for the final day. There's no more suffering on the other side. I want to be ready for the final day. I want to see him face to face. I want to be ready for the final day. The songwriter says, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. See, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know that I know that I know it was the blood for me. The songwriter said, would you be free from the burden of sin? Because there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory win? There's wonderful and saving power in the blood. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Thank you. 
Take of the blood. The door of the church. Door. 